Joining me now is Congressman Jason Smith, Republican from Missouri, chair of the House Ways and Means Committee. Congressman, what happens if all the tax cuts expire? You know, Stuart, if all the tax cuts expire, which is what the desire is of President Biden, we'll see every American face a tax increase. Four trillion dollars worth of taxes will expire the end of next year. That means at every day, average Americans, for example, who receive the child tax credit, Trump raised it to two thousand dollars per person. That will be cut in half to a thousand. The standard deduction, which was increased under the Trump tax cuts, which 90 percent of Americans use when they file their taxes, will be more than slashed in half, meaning every individual will pay more in their taxes, especially the lower and middle class. Can you stop it? We absolutely will. But the elections are going to matter if the if President Trump's elected, we we maintain the control of the House of Representatives and the Republicans gain the Senate. You bet we're going to pass a tax bill in the first quarter of next year to make sure that we are protecting, and preserving the Trump tax cuts from 2017, that they will not expire. But if Biden is reelected, all bets are off. Right. Well, Biden has tweeted just as recent in the last three weeks, and he made a public statement saying if he is elected, he will assure that the Trump tax cuts expire. Got it. Congressman Neil Cavuto, my colleague on Fox Business, he fact checked White House economic advisor Jared Bernstein on Biden's false claim about inflation. Uh, Congressman, this is must see TV. Roll tape, please. It was never, ever, ever 9% when you came into office. So why does he keep saying? Well, first of all, let me point out that in that very quote you played, the president talked about how concerned he was uh, for households uh, struggling with prices that he consistently That's not what I asked you. That's high. not what I asked okay, you. So why does that. he keep misrepresenting okay. this? He's making the point uh, that the factors that caused inflation to climb to 9% were in place when he took office. No, I think that's it was not by what he said. So the annual uh, growth in core inflation in the second quarter of 21 uh, was, in fact, about 9 percent. And his point about inflation down 60 percent off its peak is very much the case. So no, look, it wasn't. It was, uh, not again, at, it was not at that. So you're, you're almost as bad as he is. <laughs> Must see TV. Uh, Congressman, inflation is a top issue for voters. Why did they keep repeating a false number, 9 percent inflation, when he walked in White House? Why? It's really hard to believe um, that the president can continue to say such untruths and people don't don't challenge it. I appreciate Mr. Cavuto for challenging it. We know that inflation was one point four percent the day that Joe Biden took the oath of office. We also known we also know in the first couple months of his tenure, when the Democrats controlled the White House, the House and the Senate, they passed a two trillion dollar American rescue plan that just fueled the inflation fire that which led to a total of right. 10 trillion dollars of a spending spree that caused inflation now that has risen 19.9 percent. But but also, Stuart, the the months before the months before Joe Biden took the oath of office, when President Trump was in the White House, inflation was less than two percent. It all increased under the Democrat policies of Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, and Chuck Schumer. I'm glad you set it straight. <laughs> set Jared Bernstein straight, too. Uh, Congressman, thanks for joining us this morning. I know we'll see you again soon. Thank you very much, sir.